We are living neath the Great Big Dipper. We are washed by the very same rain. We are swimming in the stream together, some in power and some in pain. We can worship this ground we walk on, cherishing the beings that we live beside. Loving spirits will live forever. We're all swimming to the other side. journey through thoughts and feelings, finding into wishing my head, my heart. I am gathering the tools together. I'm preparing to do my part. All of those who have come before me band together and will be my guide. Loving lessons that I will follow. We're all swimming to the other side. All of the gifts we were given to share have been with us since our beginning, and we never noticed they were there. We can balance at the brink of wisdom, never recognizing that we've arrived. Loving spirits will live together, we're all swimming to the other side. Loving spirits will live together. We're all swimming to the other side. Thank you, Chris. Mm. Good morning, I'm Reverend Karen Brammer. I am going to begin with a recognition and an acknowledgement that we are on the lands, the sacred lands of the Haudenosaunee. The Oneida Nation in particular as one of the original nations of that community of Native Americans in, the, in New York State area in Canada. We are learning, working, and organizing on this space, committing to struggle against the systems of oppression that have dispossessed Indigenous people in their lands and denied their right to self-determination work that's essential to human rights across the world. And as opening words, I will say that we are all welcome, everyone on Zoom, everyone who's here in person, everyone who's been here many times before or if it's your first time, all faiths, gender identities, all doubts, all convictions, all sorrows and joys, Every part of your whole self is welcome here. If you're new to this congregation, we're glad you've joined us and we'd love to learn more about you and let you know more about us and what's happening. And if you're here in the space, you would sign up for a newsletter, which is under the clock in the back of the sanctuary. Online, if you're able to do so, you can go to the UUA, uh, the U, U Church of Utica website and you can sign up for the newsletter there. We'd be happy to keep all connected. And so I am going to begin by switching the chalice lighting and the call to worship because we committed to changing that, but a few things take a little more time to get in the habit. So the chalice lighting that I would like to invite you into comes from the words of our current Unitarian Universalist president, president. and it is my pleasure to have Brian come and light this chalice for us. Dr. Sophia Betancourt says, the love that lives at the center of this faith is very simply the love that will abide. No matter how cranky we are, how ornery on that day, how full of grief or full of ourselves or full of joy. This is a love that will not let go, that abides with us as the Reverend Barbara Hamilton taught us, if this is a love that expects nothing less of us than the rebuilding of a struggling world, 
we have lit this chalice in the name of love that rebuilds the beloved community. And so now with a call to worship, again, the words of the Reverend Doctor, Dr. Reverend Sophia Betancourt. You might say that we are most able to co-create the all-embracing love that our tradition teaches us when we center those who are most impacted by long established systems of injustice. We have one another. We remake the sacredness of the world through pri prioritizing what's actually needed for that remaking. Anything less drives us away from our values and from faithful living. And I invite you now to turn to page 346, our first hymn in the gray hymnal. 346 and rise in body or spirit as you're able and willing. And we'll sing together. Enough. Thank you. Why did I not put this here? I, well, you can remain standing for announcements if you'd like, but I think you should probably sit down because Carol has four and Mary has one. Thank you. I am so grateful that you said that, Carol. I have said to everybody, and I mean it, if I'm skipping something, let me know. Good morning. I'm Carol Gable. Um, I have several announcements. I'll do them quick. One is UU Utica is having a table at Utica's Pride Festival, which will be held Saturday, June 1st at the Mohawk Valley Community College campus from 10 to 4. There will be lots of food and music and good people there. It'll be fun. Our wonderful welcoming and inclusion team will be hosting the table, but it's also looking for members in the congregation that might like to join them. Um, I did it several years ago and met so many great people. Um, if anybody would like to do that, Katie's here. You can talk to her after the service. Um, also, our annual meeting is uh, where we accept the annual reports of various committees, including the minister and the president, and that'll be on June 9th. Um, the annual report will be available at the end of this month. Uh, we also vote on the New Year's budget and new board members. So we hope many of you can come after service June 9th. That will be the annual meeting. Um, the board is also hosting a pre-annual meeting after church service on June 2nd. For anybody that wants more information about what happens at the annual meeting or wants to talk to Melissa about the budget, she'll be there available to answer any questions. And. Um, then after the annual meeting on June 9th, one of our members, Dave Jones, has organized a kayak canoe outing at Forestport that um, anybody can sign up for. Several of us went last year. It was a lot of fun. The kayaks are provided. I encourage people to go to celebrate summer. And um, then the last one is GA is going to be June 2021, 20, and it's going to be all online this year. J GA is General Assembly for UUs across the country to gather to do uh, workshops and sing and celebrate and um, also to vote on some important things like the, the what Karen will be talking with us today. We have one delegate, Miranda Hofelt. We'd like to have two. You know, we pay your registration fee. Alex Jackson was going to do it, but he can't now. So it's um, it's a good opportunity to learn more about Unitarian Universalists. So if anybody's interested in that, just talk to me. And I think that's it. Thank you. One of the things that makes us such a wonderful, loving community is coffee hour after the service. And I just want to express thanks to all the people that have done it. You know, for the past several months, it's been like one week after another, and people are just, just so generous, and we're so grateful that people make that what it is. So, so important to us all. And just to mention... There's nobody signed up for next week, so you have a golden opportunity. If you haven't done it in the past couple of months, now's your chance. Thank you. Mary is our, our resident Tom Sawyer. Come paint this gate. It's really fun, this fence. It's really awesome. Maybe you'd like to sing now. It's on page 346. Please rise as you are able in body or spirit. Thank you for our hymn support choir.
I think Julie was in here just a moment ago looking for Miranda to make sure we have this morning's doorkeeper for spirit play. But before Miranda goes, she's going to help me teach what we're using for together time. Come on up. So this isn't considered an intergenerational um, blessing, covenant, affirmation, all kinds of things. But let me read it to you first, and then we'll invite you to put hand motions to it as well, okay? And I know the kids are going to be really good at this. Why don't you do the hand motions while I do and then we'll all do it together. We are Unitarian Universalists. There's a U and another U, you see that? This is the Church of Open Minds, Loving Hearts, and Helping Hands. We take care of the planet Earth and each other. Awesome. Let's, let's, yes, indeedy. And I am thinking we can probably say that together with the hand motions, yes? Can we do that together? One more time, and then Sunday to Sunday, we'll begin to remember more and more, okay? And maybe I'll put the words in the order of service so it's easier for those of us like me. Okay, ready? Unitarian Universalist. And now we're going to sing the children off to the spirit play. Those who are either four, five, six, seven, eight, or nine years old are welcome to go to spirit play. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the spirit of love surround you. You're not all bases. Everywhere, everywhere you may. Thank you, men, for holding, men and women with deep voices for holding that. I should have started it much higher. Next time. Next time. Ugh. So this sermon is called the, the Chalice and the Flower because our beloved chalice, it brings us so much depth of meaning. And our principles, which we have eight of, are very deeply connected to each other. And we're talking this summer as Unitarian Universals, as we've been talking with tens of thousands of times with many, many um, opportunities with Unitarian Universalists around the world, we've been talking about bringing the wisdom of what is on the flower, which is your front, the front of your order of service as another evolution of Unitarian Universalism. We will not use, lose the chalice and the principles. They will not go away. We are including this particular wonderful new iteration of our values in Unitarian Universalism. And so I begin by, again, quoting, um, well, I've already begun quoting Reverend Dr. Uh, Sophia, and she is our president through decades of Unitarian Universalism. She's been serving to help congregations deal with conflict. She's been serving to help congregations understand the issues around racial tensions and dynamics. She's been practicing among Unitarian Universalists for a very long time. And not that long ago, just three decades ago, I found Unitarian Universalism and fell in love with this faith. The first service I attended, the minister preached about members of the LGBTQIA community as beloved, that it was necessary for all of us to be whole, to include that community and every community of people who have been marginalized. I had never in my life attended a church in which I as a lesbian was claimed beloved. I fell in love. 
For a year of being a Unitarian Universalist, I had no idea that Unitarian Universalism was anything more than the church I attended in Portsmouth, New Hampshire. But when I began training as a minister, I was required to attend the yearly gathering that Carol was talking about called General Assembly, for short, we'll call it GA, that happens in June. And by the way, we'll have the opportunity together here to watch uh, the service, one of the services from General Assembly together and also some of the other activities that if you're interested in coming together, we can. So before this millennium, before the year 2000, in order to go to GA, you had to be able to travel across the country. I know you like to get In order to go to GA, you had to be either retired or able to use your vacation time if you had vacation time. You had to pay the hundreds of thousands, hundreds or thousands of dollars, not only for travel, hotels, and food, but also for registration fees. When I began attending General Assembly, most of the people were white, most were upper middle class, and most were retired. GA is the time each year when the denomination gathers and represents from representatives from congregations all over the congregation, all over the world and, unit and United States make decisions including voting on elected officials, on our budgets, on policy changes, on theological issues, and how we practice our theologies. Really essential core business happens at General Assembly. So you can see the issue here, that we have valued the democratic process for a long time, and we have valued addressing systemic oppression for a long time. But our systems were unintentionally set up to make participation impossible for most people. Again, not intentionally, but that was the impact, exclusion, systemic oppression. To change, we had to center the needs of the marginalized people and attend to what was really needed. And so we've begun these conversations. Oh gosh, the Commission on Appraisal was probably eight years ago, and then the Eighth Principle Project came up in order to help us think about intentionally addressing racism in our spiritual, our faith lives, and our active, our active lives. This particular iteration comes from making sure that we had conversations with all marginalized people, including youth and young adults, including people who were in the rural areas, people who were not able to get to General Assembly by driving there or taking vacation, et cetera. We had many, many, many conversations. And out of it comes an acknowledgement that what is core to all of us is love. We just have to figure out how to practice it. Betten Core says, you might say that we are most able to co-create the all-embracing love that our tradition teaches us when we center those most impacted by long established systems of injustice. We save one another. We remake the sacredness of the world through prioritizing. What's no, I think it's understandable most people would. For that remaking, like changing General Assembly so that everyone can attend. She says, anything less drives us away from our values and from faithful living. We've been through a great deal of change, including the use of electronic streaming so that access is wide open to all who are representing their congregations. And now, the elected president of the association, Sophia Betancourt, is black and part of the LGBTQIA community. Our UUA website says of her, Reverend Dr. Betancourt is, quote, rooted in her lived identities as queer, multiracial, Afro-Latin, first-generation daughter of immigrants from Chile and Panama. Yeah. She's our 10th president. We had the first, first white woman the last eight years, and before her was a white Latino man, and there were some real difficulties with his ministry in our UUA. He left and was replaced by a team of three, all of whom were minor, quote unquote minority uh, Unitarian Universalists. So things have been changing radically over a fairly brief time. We've been through a great deal of change 
as a faith tradition in order to include all those who would be in our tradition who were normally left on the margins. So this June is a really historic vote to be taken at General Assembly. And that vote will accept or reject the words on the back of your order of service as what we want now for a statement about who we are and what we intend. The words on your order of service go before the body of congregational representatives to decide whether to accept or reject them as central to our faith. We will not make the eight principles go away. The proposed change states clearly that our values are not only what they are, but what we covenant to do to live those values centered in love. And so I'm gonna invite you to read with me. Um, I am going to begin. Well, I had an order of service here. I'm, there it is. Thank you, Mary. You know, one of the congregations I served loved me so much because they were really high-powered people who were never allowed to make mistakes in public. I made so many mistakes and clearly didn't hate myself that they were like, oh, you can do that? You can make mistakes. So this is my special ministry to you, is constantly making mistakes. So on the back of your order of service, I'll read the first sentence of each and then invite you, if you'd like, to read the remainder about how we plan, how we hope to live out these. So it begins with interdependence. We honor the interdependent web of all existence with reverence for the great web of life and with humility. We acknowledge our place in it. We covenant to protect Earth and all beings from exploitation. We will create and nurture sustainable relationships of care and respect, mutuality, and justice. We will work to repair harm and damaged relationships. Pluralism. We celebrate that we are all sacred beings, diverse in culture, experience, and theology. We covenant to learn from one another in our free and responsible search for truth and meaning. We embrace our differences and commonalities with love, curiosity, and respect. Justice. We work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where all thrive. We covenant to dismantle racism and all forms of systemic oppression. We support the use of inclusive democratic processes to make decisions within our congregations, our association, and society at large. Transformation. We adapt to the changing world. We covenant to collectively transform and grow spiritually and ethically. Openness to change is fundamental to our Unitarian and Universalist heritages never complete, never perfect. Generosity. We cultivate a spirit of gratitude and hope. We covenant to freely and compassionately share our faith, presence, and resources. Our generosity connects us to one another in relationships of interdependence and mutuality. Equity. We declare that every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and wisdom and worthiness. We covenant to use our time, wisdom, attention, and money to build and sustain fully accessible and inclusive communities. Thank you. It, it's it's difficult to say that it's not a done deal that we will, um, as Unitarian Universalists, approve this um, at General Assembly. And what I've heard is that there are Unitarian Universalists who are so attached to the principles and the chalice that we adore, have felt guided by, that having something different is just too hard. And the other thing is that Unitarian Universalists have a very strong streak of independence. 
as it should be. And many do not want to be, hold, to be held accountable to um, a covenant that others have made that they have not had um, a part in creating as covenants. So I will report to you sometime in the summer, or you will see in the information from our Unitarian Universalist Association how we've done. Sophia Betancourt again, choosing, choosing to live one's life guided by love cannot help but drive us to work together in community awesome. until everyone is free. By putting love at the center means you can't help but do that or long to do that or dream of that or worry about not doing that. Liberation theology comes from two main sources, both Latin American liberation theologies and black liberation theologies. What's important is that both of them call us to undo the legacies of injustice and claim that all what that what we hold together is as most holy is centered on those who live with oppression and who struggle for the freedom of all. We take our guidance and instruction from people who've experienced oppression because those of us who do not experience that oppression do not know what we do not know. Those are my words. She continues, there is a love that sets us free, not free as in having the power to do whatever we want, but free as in not weighed down or bound by the patterns of hatred and control that get passed from generation to generation. Free as in restless, called to solidarity wherever we witness injustice, free as in knowing without a doubt that we are worthy, that it is ours to invite others into the same wisdom for themselves, that they too are worthy. Free, she continues, to imagine a world where children are never in harm's way, where the violence and desperation of generations has served instead as a site of sacred repair, interrupting the cycles of war and dehumanization. Free to express our highest values and what we believe in as many poetic forms as there are people in the room. Free enough to build communities that love us so deeply that we are held when we falter and are invited back into sacred covenant when we fail." End quote. The Unitarian Universalism of the president of our association and tens of thousands of Unitarian Universalists is centered on love. That love translates to mean a love that abides and holds us all in the journey towards freedom for every person. Love is at the center. Our values are interpreted through love and love's call to co-create a more loving world. I claim this Unitarian Universalism centered in love, a love that abides and holds us in the journey towards freedom for everyone, including a respect for the wholeness of the earth of which we are a part. I delight in our faith that invites every one of us to be held by that abiding love and work together for the freedom of all, including our own. We work toward love. We practice love. We interpret our values through love. May it be so for us all. Blessed be and amen. If you would turn to 131. 131 in the gray hymnal is love will guide us. When you're ready, please rise in body or spirit and join in singing.
seated. Would you take a few moments to just settle into yourself and in whatever way you feel um, more grounded, more centered, more able to connect with what you know in your heart is most central in life. Take a moment to do that. More words from Sophia Betancourt. Sometimes what we know of love and justice pushes us in ways we never expected. And sometimes the need to bear witness to such a love in the world is heartbreakingly large. It's in those moments that we most need one another and most need beloved community. We need reminding, we need solidarity, we need connection and care. Our freely made choice to participate in this greater community can slowly renew us. It can even repair the kinds of grief that have been building for so many people on the margins of the Unitarian Universalism to restore what we long to hold at our own centers and to heal that which keeps us from being more loved and more loving. And so we side with love. We organize in the name of love. We educate about the importance of love and we donate to further love. And most of all, we share that love together. And as you breathe in, may all that we hope serve to increase the possibility of love. May our prayers serve to increase the real possibility of justice. May the clarity of our minds help us to know what it is truly ours to do in this world. Maybe it's so for all of us in the name of all that is holy and in all the holy names. Blessed be and amen. We collect this morning's offering as gifts to make real the vision of this loving community. says go slow every beat reveals another step forward and when you reach out you're giving me a chance to love you more and when you reach out chance to love you more. 
take. Thank you, Chris. I invite the ushers to bring the money forward unless you did that when my eyes were closed. I don't see it. Well, the hope was to allow our ushers the capacity to stay put by bringing the money here because right now they're off collecting, I mean, pay, uh, counting the money. So we're going to do whatever we can to help them stay connected to us. All right, now, Ken is not here this morning, so I'm thinking we're going to wait. That This spot is where in the future Sundays, Ken or other members of the social justice team will talk briefly um, about something that um, you're invited to connect with or do participate in to help bring our faith and our values out into the larger community. Um, letter writing is one of those things, but there are other opportunities that he's going to bring forward as that team will bring forward in the future. So I'm excited about that. And so for our benediction, mm, we will extinguish the chalice together after the benediction. As we leave this beloved time and place, may we feel the residue, the echo of love's promise to set us all free. May we feel that over and over, we can return here to remember how to remake the, sac the sacredness in our own hearts and in a hurting world. Would you read with me the words for extinguishing our chalice as I, chal as I extinguish the chalice? We extinguish this flame, but not the light of truth, or the warmth of community, or the fire of commitment. These we carry in our hearts until we meet again. <laughs> Fight until the end. We have been sent to protect and to defend. Let justice flow like a river, flow from the peaks to the ground. Let justice flow like a river. Just dead. 